In today's video, I want to look at this surprising equation right over here. Now, when I actually tried to solve it, I had a feeling of what the answer might be, and the answer was totally different than what I was expecting. So give this a try. I suggest substituting a u for the square root of x minus 1 and see what you get. Leave your thoughts in the comments as you go along, pause the video, and then come back to take a look at what the solution looks like. Okay, so before we actually embark on this, I want to take a look at what our intuition would say about it. So you have the square root of something that has a square root inside of it, and the same thing over here. So you can imagine the following. You might do the following if you were to go about this a traditional way. You subtract this and square. Then you'd have an expression here that would have a radical in it. So I'll actually write this without the content here. You'd have something like this, uh, and then you'd have something like this. If you rearrange and square, you'd have something that looks like this, equaling... Uh, 1 plus something that looks like this by squaring the two pieces here and then minus twice whatever this is which looks something like this okay so now you would have this unfortunate situation where you'd have to sort of square again right and that would get rid of one of these two squares so you might decide to move this over here which would make this a minus a minus and an equals. You square again and you'll still, because you can rewrite this as a quantity plus something times the square root, square again, you still have a square root involved and you square again and eventually get rid of square roots. So you could rearrange this to get an eighth degree equation in terms of x. So you might expect that this thing would have at most eight solutions. But it turns out that this is not the case. So let's actually analyze the situation, substituting u for square root of x minus 1, and then seeing what happens. All right, so u is the square root of x minus 1. So let's look at these quantities here. So you have a 6u here, then what is this quantity here? It's x plus 8. u squared is x minus 1. So x plus 8 is u squared plus 9. So here we have the square root of u squared plus 9 minus 6u. And here, x plus 3 is u squared plus 4. So we have the square root of u squared plus 4 minus 4u, equaling 1. All right, so we might notice that we have perfect squares inside of here. Here, we have the quantity u minus 3 squared. And here, we have the quantity u minus 2 squared. And we're equaling 1 here. And now the square root of the square of something is its absolute value, right? For example, if this quantity here was 1, we'd get 1. But if this quantity here, u minus 3, was negative 1, then we would have negative 1 squared, the square root of that, which is 1, not negative 1. So this equation reduces to the absolute value of u minus 3 plus the absolute value of u minus 2 is 1. So what we want to do now is analyze the solutions to this equation. To analyze this, I want to think about what the meaning of a statement like this is geometrically. So you have this value u, and it's sitting on the real line. Here are the points 2 and 3 somewhere along the real line. This here is the distance from u to the number 3. And similarly, this is the distance from u to 2. So let's analyze when the sum of those distances actually exactly equals 1. So if u was over here somewhere to the left of 2, then its distance from 3 would be actually strictly greater than 1 because the number is less than 2. So we don't have any solutions there whatsoever. And if u was over here, its distance from 2 is strictly greater than 1. So we don't have any solutions to this in that region as well. So the only possible places we have solutions are right over here. Now, say we pick a value of u randomly in here. Let's say u is right over here. Then this quantity is this distance here, and this quantity is this distance here. But the sum of these two distances is actually the length of this entire interval. So if u is inside here, it satisfies this equation. And when u is outside of the interval, it doesn't. So the complete solution set to this equation is actually all real values of u that are between 2 and 3. And so now we can figure out all the values of x that satisfy this. 2 has to be 
less than or equal to the square root of x minus 1, which is less than or equal to 3. And so if we square, we get 4 bounds x minus 1 from below and 9 bounds it from above. And so the entire set of values of x that satisfy our original equation is all real numbers between 5 and 10 inclusive. This is kind of surprising. Like you don't expect that when you look at this at face value. It looks like you're going to get, as we analyzed earlier in the video, maybe some degree 8 equation that has a specific set of solutions. So I think this is a pretty cool problem because it sort of defies your intuition at first, but through a systematic and careful analysis of it, substituting a common thing that you see, you're able to derive a conclusion that goes quite counterintuitive to what you expect. And I find these kind of phenomena happen a lot when I'm doing math and math research where I have an intuition about something, but when I follow through in a systematic way, I end up with something that looks quite different than what I expected. So I hope you liked today's video. If you did, definitely click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel.